What's up, everybody? Do you sometimes have some deep philosophical questions about life, maybe existential questions about life that you want answered by two people who record episodes and then post them on YouTube and podcasting services? Yes. Well, you're in luck because today's It's very episode... specific. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to disappoint. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're in luck because today's <laughs> episode... We are answering some of the best <laughs> existential questions according to this website. We'll post a link down in the show notes description. Yeah. Uh, this is the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. What's going on, Danny? What's up, Randy? Yeah, so this is pretty <laughs> exciting because there's actually a few different lists on here. There's the best existential questions. There's the deepest existential questions. There's the funniest existential questions. Yeah. So we may have some episodes coming up in the future because I think... Me personally, I think answering the funniest ones would be pretty interesting. Yeah, I think it would be good. I'd like to come back to it again later, too, because there's oh, also yeah. like too many to do in one thing anyway. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. Especially if you yeah. want to be deep and thorough and all that stuff. So uh, yeah, I guess be- without further ado, let's just get into it and start yeah. answering some questions. Oh, and by the way, guys, this is these are our opinions. We're not like we're not perfect. If you get triggered by any of this stuff, get over yourself. A hundred years, we're all going to be dead anyways. <laughs> so like, you know, that this is, is true. for fun. And maybe yeah. for learning, okay? So uh, question number one, what is the meaning of life? We started off easy. I think it's like 47. Is that the answer? 42, from... wasn't it 42? 42. Yeah, 42. it's 40, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep, that's pretty much it. I, I think, <laughs> I always kind of laugh when, when people ask that question because it's like, as if there's, as if, as if there's one single meaning. Like yeah. here's, okay, and here's why I say that. So I like to read biographies uh, because I learn a lot from them. But sometimes, particularly two of them that I've read have been like so difficult to read because the person's views were very, very different from mine. And but I just read it anyway, because I was like, that's that'll grow my mind by actually yeah. like, reading this stuff and seeing it. So one of them was like that was very, very difficult to read was the autobiography of Malcolm X, because he was very convinced that there was one truth for everybody yeah, and like everybody in the world there's one truth and and he was very convinced that he knew that truth and that he had to like forcefully impose that truth on other people and I was like wow this is crazy <laughs> so like when I I laugh when I get this question like what's the meaning of life as if there's only one meaning for all billions of people that are alive yeah. right now and the billions more that have survived for all eternity well, I think that's the problem. Like when we ask these questions, because they're like, you know, when you ask like, what's the meaning of life? It's, it's kind of vague and ambiguous, but it also assumes that there's an answer. It's not like, is there? It's what is, right? Mm. And if you say life, are we talking about like all existence, my life, you know, everyone's lives, humanity. And I think this is one of the difficulties though, because we make an assumption and then you know, people fill it in. I do think people that do like Malcolm X, people that do believe there is one answer or or one overall meaning or purpose or whatever, tend to be usually very like motivated and driven. Whereas for better or worse, it's not always a good thing. You know, but yeah, I agree with you. I don't think there is one. I mean, I don't think there is any, you know, absolute or definitive meaning. I think we make it and that's that's all there is. Well, that's what I was just, that's what I was just thinking about. So like this question I look at it, it's like a very defeating question. Like, what's the meaning of life? Why does my life not have meaning? Why do I feel worse? <laughs> like, that's the, same, that's the same type of rabbit hole I see when I see this question. Whereas yeah. instead, if you, if you switch that question around and you can be like, how can I give my life meaning? All of a sudden, you have an empowering question that can actually yeah. help your life go somewhere. No, it's true. You know, we all, I mean, every, we all want to make our lives intelligible, right? We all want to make sense. Of, we all hope to like our experiences, what happens to us. We want to understand it and put it into like, you know, some frame of reference. But yeah, I think you're right. I think it is, it can be very defeating asking that, like assuming that there is one in it, like for some reason, like either you don't have access to it or it's like, doesn't include you or something, right? <laughs> I think instead, you know, asking like, how can I make my life meaningful? What makes my life meaningful? What's meaning, you know, what gives my life value, whatever, right? That can change it and, and we can make it our own, which I think is, is way better. I think it's one of the things I like about existentialists too. Is a lot of them, you know, 
thought we'd just die and there's nothing else. And so that kind of frees us to do what we want. And to, to, you know, there is no truth. There's no absolute truth. So we can make our own truth. Well, we were talking about that earlier this week, how like uh, the, how we're all going to die. So our, our lives are kind of like these flowers that have a little bit of beauty for the short time that they're here and then we're gone. Yeah. But that beauty is up to us to actually like develop and it kind of it kind of gives us the freedom to just be whoever we want to be yeah. yeah well i think that's right for the existentialists. i think that is the answer is like being all i mean authenticity or being like being yourself being you but we all struggle with that it's super hard <laughs> you know and i think that's why we ask for meaning because it would be i mean in a certain sense right if the meaning was outside of us it would be easier all we would have to do is know it and then, oh, now we know, right? We have it. We can, you know, put ourselves in a context or in a situation. But like, really, it's you know, it's not outside. I kind of, I kind of laugh as I get older because, like, this whole thing about being yourself. Like, when I was a kid, <laughs> I knew what that was. I had it. I had it spot yeah. on when I was a kid, and then I spent my whole entire like early adulthood trying to be something different than what I was. Yeah. And then now I'm just back at the same spot you know, playing, like painting little miniatures and reading fantasy mm. books and like doing all the stuff that I did as a kid. Cause I love that. And that's me. And, but now I don't feel like, uh, the guilt associated with not being cool or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's funny, right? It's like yeah. you, you are yourself and then you, you, you find society and like whatever, and then you lose yourself <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> and if you're lucky, you find yourself again. Yeah. Yeah. So that brings us to question number two what's your purpose in life and i think they're asking you specifically danny what's your purpose in life me mine <laughs> hmm. it's a tough one yeah, yeah you know this i mean this is another tough question because like again like do we well i guess you know it's funny like do we want to i have an answer okay go ahead go ahead go that's ahead. why i'm thinking life? okay yeah. so this is something my my belief is this is something you have to figure out on your own like i think yeah. that kind of like kind of like how uh for those of you who know trees that have acorns like inside of that acorn is another tree you have to plant it in the ground it needs to be get sunlight and water and all that stuff but inside of that acorn is the potential for another tree so i kind of think that like inside of all of us we actually have all the dreams and desires of our heart already come into fruition it's just kind of up to us to actually develop that so when I when I look at that question, what's your purpose in life? It's it's actually the realization of your deepest desires. Like I think that's so like, exactly what your purpose is. Creating and, like the right like environment, the right nourishment, all that to then make yeah. that. Yeah, I like that. That's a good one. I like that one. And I and I also yeah. look at it like you already have everything you need inside of you. You just need to discover it. It's like there's this yeah. there's this story of a guy who bought a plot of land down in Texas and He'd been living on that land for like 15 years, barely scraping by. It was unfarmable. Like he was in poverty for years and years and years. And then this oil company came in and asked if they could dig on his land. They'd give him a portion of the proceeds. Turns out it was the biggest oil, uh, Derek, in history. Nice. Overnight, <laughs> he became like he became like a multi-billionaire. And it's like, oh, that's lucky. when was when when did he when was he a billionaire? When they found the oil or when he actually purchased the land years before and he just didn't know it? And so I look at that as like our potential. So we all have this potential to be absolutely amazing, but it's like, when are we going to realize that potential? I like that. Yeah. I mean, I would say something similar. Like I think it's, you know, our purpose at least ideally should be right. Living our best life and realizing ourselves. I think, cause you know, we only know what we can do what we're capable of once we do it. Right. You have to actually do things in the world to realize like what your, what your powers you possess or what abilities you possess. So I think, yeah, I think that's part of our purpose is just kind of like, you know, reaching our full development as human beings, not limiting ourselves, not letting ourselves stagnate, not, you know, letting ourselves get stuck because we are, we're problem solving beings and we're meaning making creatures. You know, we create meaning, we pro solve, solve problems. And I think that's kind of what we need to do. We just need to be active and do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the next question we have here Ooh. is do you have a right to be happy or should you earn it? Ooh. This is interesting, you know, because it's like, is it just something that everybody sh should ultimately just have? Or is there something you should have to do? I think, I think, 
I would actually side, I think, a little bit more with Earn in the sense that I think that, you know, it's, I think everybody can be happy, but it's something that you have to, you have to put some work in because there's a lot of things that are going to be contrary to your happiness or work against it. And you have to find your, your way to that path of happiness and allow yourself. Yeah. I think you have to allow yourself to be happy too, you know, mm, and that's, that's the other true. difficult thing. I, I agree with you there a hundred percent. I don't think that anybody has a right to be happy because this whole idea of having a right to something just makes a bunch of entitled people. And that's a huge problem we're dealing with in America right now is everybody's entitled. They think that yeah. they, they deserve everything just because they were born to whatever. Um, but <laughs> I also look at this question as should you earn it as actually an important thing because happiness is something that's kind of in the progress. So I was telling you about the book that I was reading and towards the end, like I really liked how he described where happiness comes from. So I'm just going to share that here. Yeah, um, he says that happiness comes from doing things you love, having meaningful relationships, helping people, working towards a goal and being at peace with yourself. And what I see from that is a lot of those things are things that are in the process. They're actually earning, which is yeah. what we were just talking about with this question. So yeah. like, you know, working towards a goal, that's something that you're earning. You're in the process, yeah. okay? Doing things you love. Generally, that's a process. You're earning it. Even though you're doing something you love, it's, it's not a static thing, really. Having meaningful relationships, that's something you're constantly earning. That's constantly yeah. changing. So like helping people, again, something you're earning. So all this stuff associated with happiness. Number one, notice how he didn't have money on the list. And this is no. a guy who's like a hundred millionaire, okay? Um, but it... All these things are like earning. They're all processes. And then also there's being at peace with yourself, which is probably the only static one there, which is just like but that's accepting not really yourself static, as though. you are. Yeah, yeah. But I think that still takes work every day too, though. That's something that still is. I think, you know, it's interesting. Is they're, they're all active, right? It's, it's an active life. Aristotle mm. said that, you know, that a, like a good life is an active life. Like we have to be doing things, you know, not just like stagnant, sleeping, whatever. And I think, yeah, I think you make a good point. You know, when we think of these things in terms of like, entitlement or in terms of like right sometimes it like it really does diminish the role of the individual in their own life right it's your life so you know yeah you have to allow yourself to be happy but you also have to be active to have it mm -hmm. yeah, and plus when you earn it it feels so much better yeah yeah because then you're like it's I yours. Went through all that stuff <laughs> yeah. i went through all that stuff and then i got here this is incredible whereas when yeah. you just when you just get it without earning it you take advantage of it yeah, you don't even realize what you have, too. That's the other thing. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of like you don't even notice it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Go Next on. question. Uh, what are the universal human rights? Yeah. I think there's I think there's only one. What, what do you think it is? Go ahead. The right to die. <laughs> like, okay, okay. Okay, this, go ahead, this go is ahead. something yeah. when I was reading it, I was like, my answer might trigger some people and that's totally fine. I'm okay with it. Cause again, Whatever. I don't think that people have any rights whatsoever. Like I think, I think it's messed up that people do a lot of the bad things they do to people, but thinking that you actually have this unalienable right is just messed yeah. up because guess what? You don't like, I mean, you may no. have it in America, but you go to some other countries, you're not going to have the same thing. You now. don't have it in America either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're just, we're just no. promised it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're yeah. promised well, it in America. But so like the thing is, I don't think there are universal rights, but I think there are things that you should definitely work for and you should have these boundaries for yourself that if somebody violates that, you're going to go full throttle against them. And then like the, my answer to this is, yeah, you have the right to die because everybody's going to die. You know what? There's not a single person alive who hasn't who isn't going to die. So that's your right. You have the right to live while you live, but then die. That's it. Yeah. So what do you think, Dan? No, I, I actually agree with you. I think I don't think um yeah, I don't like the I don't like talk of this. Like I get conceptually, like and, and like when you're talking like in a political arena and stuff, like when you know, like the UN Declaration of Human Rights or whatever, like they're they're nice things to say, right? Or they're 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 like um, you know, it's like it's like an ideal thing that like we're saying, okay, we commit to maybe trying to make this happen or something, right? Because all those countries that signed that, none of them were there either, you know? These things don't just exist, but there's something that, like, both we as individuals and collectively have to work towards if we want them, right? That if we want a world where this is the case, we actually have to do stuff. It's not just guaranteed. It's not just given to us. And that's clear because of the way the world is, right? Well, it's, it's kind of like, like doublespeak. 
you know, we make this stuff up because it's not true. And <laughs> it's in, in the Tao Te Ching, he says, if you take away morality, people will be good. And it's just yeah, like, yeah. It, it's, it's one of these things that's only there because it's not true. And so we have to say, yeah. this is how things should be because they're not this way. So it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. We'll go on. Well, to it's like, question. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with like, like thinking about how things could be better because that means, you know, you're thinking about how you could change it. But like, the problem is, is that when you think of them as like guaranteed and stuff like this or universal, I think people don't realize that they have to be, they have to be made. They have to be preserved. They have, like, if this is the world you want, you have to make it and you also have to contribute to it. And you also have to, you know, preserve you it and all it. It. Yeah. yeah. And that's like a lot of stuff. So. Yeah, I agree with you. All right. Yeah. Uh, question number five <laughs> is, right. is happiness just chemicals circulating through our bodies? Ooh, I would actually say, does it matter? Anyway, who cares? That's a good question. Because, yeah, yeah. Or because good I answer. Think like, yeah, because I think even if it is, because this, this is a big, you know, question of philosophy, which is like, you know, is everything just, just neurons firing or chemical processes or whatever, but like, even if it is, it doesn't matter because there's the other layer of our reality, which is our conscious layer, which interprets things. So even if that is the case, I don't think it actually matters. And I think, yes, like, and I think we also have examples too, where it seems like you can do things to give yourself temporary pleasure, like with chemical reactions, you can get high, you can work out real hard, you can do these things that give you a release, but there's also a difference between that and like the long-term like well-being, um, you know, positive mindset like mental health that comes with like you know i think that's sort of like peace with yourself and like happy does that make sense yeah yeah absolutely i i i really like your answer there doesn't even matter because uh what it made me think of is like this is not the question that a happy person asks you know when <laughs> yeah, you're no. happy you're not you're not wondering is this feeling just chemicals running when you're, you, ask that question, you ask that question when you're like looking for antidepressants to be like, could this make me happy? Like that's yeah, the type yeah. of question that you get then. But then the other thing that I also have to say about that question is it's somewhat misleading because it has this whole concept of like uh, self versus other or us versus them. Because yeah. it's like, is happiness just chemicals circulating through our body? Well, based on science, yeah. But guess what? How did those chemicals start circulating there? Was it because you were having meaningful relationships with other yeah. people? Well, what says that's outside of you? Being how we're all just stardust and flying through space yeah. at some ridiculous speed. So like all this thing that is just this thing that's just circulating through here. Well, yeah. how did that come about? No, you know, you make a good point though. It's like the nature versus nurture argument, right? Like you can't separate the two because we're both. We are the thing. Right. So, you know, we are the, the chemical processes as well as the thinking thing on top of it. So it doesn't matter either way. Right. It is. Yeah. Then it's still happiness, I guess. But like, you know, what's the difference? <laughs> there's there's yeah. this uh, there's this funny little meme right here or maybe not a meme, but it's John Lennon. It's a quote from him. Mm. It says, when I was five years old, my mother always told me that happiness was the key to life. When I went to school. They asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. I wrote down happy. They told me I didn't understand the assignment. I told them they didn't understand life. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You Next know, question. <laughs> yeah, okay. Go on. Hey, let's go. No, I was, no, gonna, go I was just going to say, it, it's funny that we, it is kind of funny that like everybody wants to be happy, but that's not something we like actually give any time to. To like when we're growing up and like to, to education or anything because nobody really knows how to do it like you know well, whatever it's, but it's it's also something that we everybody wants to be happy and we assume it's somewhere outside of ourself we assume it's somewhere not where we are right now and yeah so like yeah. one exercise that i like is like how am i happy right now because that's a good one there's always there's always some little hint of it and whenever Whenever I forget and I'm really struggling, I just look around my room and I see all these things that I wanted I was so just badly <laughs> and then now I have them. And I'm like, yeah. what's wrong? How could I not be happy? This is incredible. <laughs> all these things that I wanted for all that time. Now I have, them, but like you're, yeah, because you're focused on the, the, what you don't have rather than what you actually have, right? Just like mm -hmm. gratitude is so important because it's a reminder of what you have rather than what you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Consumerism is yeah. a bitch. Yeah. 
you know? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, next question, and we'll just blow through these fast to get some other questions, but yeah. are, are yeah. human ethics learned or natural? Learned. Yeah, if real at I all. Agree. I agree. <laughs> okay. I agree. Okay, cool. Next question, and we'll just blow through this one too. Yep. Is there a God? <laughs> no, and it depends on it. Well, or it depends on how you interpret it, I guess, but no. Uh, I would say yes. I'm totally 100% okay, yes. Yeah. I just, uh, I, was, I, me, I think it's perspective. You know what I mean? Like, I think, yep. I don't think it's a God like any of the people have claimed that it is a God so far, thus far. Yeah. Maybe that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. It does. It, it could be different for all different people and all religions could be a hundred percent correct. Uh, I definitely don't prescribe to that. Like uh, I definitely don't prescribe to the mean God mentality, like the old Testament. Yeah. It doesn't make any God. sense. <laughs> yeah. no. But, but I do prescribe to like the God loves you type of thing. Well, like if you're God was, a child. I mean, the mean God, yeah. it's like, well, why'd you bother creating everything anyway? You knew it was going to happen. What the hell, man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, what kind of yeah. sociopath are you? Then yeah. you create everything, know it's going to happen and do it anyway. Mm-hmm. And then just get mad at everything that you created because it was yeah. subpar. Don't blame know, the thing right? you created, blame the workman, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, like, I know personally that once I, once I started believing myself, my life in general just got better and easier. It took a lot of the weight off of myself. And maybe it's just a psychological thing, but I'm of, I'm of the firm belief that if it works for you, do it so yeah yeah i like i think you know what's funny what really works for me is just not answering some of these things like i don't actually Mm -hmm. believe in truths like objective truths and i'm very like you know i guess hazy in the area but i also find that like not just not committing to anything actually works for me (laughs) since it does leave it open i don't know well it's different it's different for everybody like every (laughs) i mean from all the other questions we all have this subjective experience is different for everybody so we can't have one answer for everybody. Which yeah. brings us to the next question. Yeah, this is good, right? Yeah. Where do we go when we die? I don't know. <laughs> well, I would say the cemetery <laughs> or, or, yeah, the, that, so wherever you choose or the place that, where they burn your body, whatever that's called. What yeah. is what is we, though, in this sense, too? Is it the physical body or is it the, you know, that goes back to that happiness question, the chemical thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of one of those questions where it depends on your beliefs. All like, these I, things depend on. I mean, they say everything. even according to science, <laughs> even according to the science, they say that like all no matter is created or destroyed, it's just kind of recycled. So yeah. then, because you have to look at it the opposite way. Like, let's say there were bodies and souls, okay, and then all these people have been dying throughout history. And if the soul part isn't recycled, because we know the body is recycled, it just goes back into the yeah. earth and gets churned back up and turns into a yeah, tree. Yeah, stand to reason, but, right? Yeah. yeah. But if the if the souls don't get recycled, like where's the landfill with all the souls? You know? Yeah. yeah. We're gonna just run out of space sometime. So like, wouldn't yeah, it make true. sense for it to be recycled? But you know, it's interesting too, though, because we are recycled. Like if you you know you go back into everything, so in a sense, there's a party that still exists afterwards, right, on Earth. Just mm-hmm. in not the same form. Yeah, and it's probably it probably doesn't have this like reasoning thinking part that we no. associate with. It could be different. But it, that's the crazy part, is that this reasoning thinking part that you think is you probably doesn't go on, but the you that actually is you probably yeah. does go on. <laughs> yeah. Which is, it yeah, makes the whole thing but yeah, it's very strange. It yeah, it's a, yeah. Okay, next question. Is one lifetime enough? This one's interesting, actually, because I think, you know, you only have one. It's, you know, I think it can be. I think that's unless you true. believe I, I, you have others, because we're not here yeah, to tell got, people. That's true. <laughs> right. We're not here to tell you what to believe. No, but I think I think it um, maybe maybe like if it's done right. Yes. Or yeah. done very poorly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And definitely yes. Yeah. That's all you get. <laughs> yeah, that's all you want. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think you know what? I think that it's actually like uh I find value in only having one lifetime. I mm-hmm. think if I had others, I wouldn't value this one and I would probably just be a complete degenerate. Well, you know what? Yeah, right. And like, you know, it's also like it's also that problem of the 
you know, it's like the um, like the immortality problem too, right? That it's the shortness, the brevity. Like, yeah, we all want more time, obviously, and that's fine. But if it really were like infinite, like one life infinitely, like it would just get, I mean, after a time, like you'd probably be looking for ways to try and end your life rather than continue. And if you yeah. knew that you had infinite lives, like you just kept going, like at some point, I don't know, it would just get, yeah, it would probably become too much to like conceptualize or handle. Yeah. Alan Watts actually had something along these lines yeah. where he was saying how like there's a good chance that we're all just gods because like let's say that you let's, let's say that you were omniscient and omnipresent and everything so you literally live out every fantasy you've ever had you've done everything you could possibly do and then you just get super bored with life so you, the only thing left to do would be like well what would happen if I couldn't see into the future and I wasn't powerful what would life be like yeah. then? Yeah, and I died. Yeah. And it's like, well, then you would be an ordinary mortal. And it's just like, so there's a good chance we I all think. are gods. Yeah. It is interesting. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. All right. So the next one is humanity going in the right or wrong direction? Oh, good question. Depends on what you mean by right or wrong here. And if there is a right or wrong, I don't know that there is. I think we're going in a direction. And I think that yeah. direction is influenced by a lot. You know, it's funny these questions always have this like underlying assumption that there's like there is a clear like oppositional thing like yes or no and there or it's 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 a simple answer and it's like well everything's so complicated and complex and everything's influenced by the past maybe we can't go in any other direction than we're going now maybe this is the only one possible <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> you know? that's a that's a good point because this question is asking <laughs> is humanity going right or wrong and the answer yeah. would be yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> It's doing, yeah, I guess one of them. <laughs> yes, or, or maybe yep. both. I mean, there are, there are certain things that are getting better. There are it's certain things that are getting worse. worse. So it could be, you know. But when you look at it, like life really hasn't been much better. This is like this is like the pinnacle of human existence. We're living there, you know. But you, but again, though, like we don't because we don't even know where it goes either. It just is. It, it is not right or wrong. It's just it's doing what it's doing. And I think mm -hmm. this gets back to to like. If you, this gets back to, I think, to the individuals, you know, taking part in it, if they think it should, you know, actively participating, if they think it should be something else, you know? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, this brings us to the next question, since we don't oh, know where we're going. Will okay. the human race go extinct? I mean, probably at some point. I, mean, I would say a hundred percent chance. Yes. Yeah. yeah right. Mm -hmm. Like at some point. It's gonna <laughs> 100 percent chance. Yes. Because yeah. I mean, the universe is going to go through some magnificent change at some point. The sun will blow out. Like I mean, eventually something's going to happen, right? But we were talking about this this past week. How you know, I I like to listen to the meditations by Marcus Aurelius because they give me some <laughs> peace of mind and some perspective. And like, here's he literally was the Elon Musk of his time. Okay, the richest, More than that, the most really. powerful, the most well known. Yeah, but he but also he, he actually had like literally control of everything too like i think he was even more powerful of like the right. new more yeah 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 and here was this guy who literally was like the alpha human being of his time and he's gone all that we have is his book and guess what when we're gone nobody's going to remember him he's going to be yeah. he's going to be gone like everything that he the most powerful person in the entire world for whoever long He's just going to be gone. Nothing. Gone. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, yeah. Do you know what's crazy, too? The dinosaurs were around for like 250 million years. We've been around for like, what, 300,000? Yeah. <laughs> so you really think about it. It's like, you know, that's crazy. They were around for 250 million. They had this whole thing to themselves and they gone. Yeah, that's crazy, too. Yeah. But fortunately, they're coming back. I saw this movie where they're taking DNA from oh, mosquito nice. and they're putting it nice. into some reptiles, yeah. and we're gonna have dinosaurs again. I heard they're it's, working on that. That looked cool. It's gotta yeah. be true because they can't make that stuff up in movies. No, nah. <laughs> right. it looks uh, real too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, next question. This is kind of an interesting opinion piece. What would make the world a better place? Got, you got an answer? I got an answer. answer. Okay, go ahead. Go I, ahead. My answer is if people would take personal responsibility. Damn it. I was going to say, I was going to say if people did the things that they thought would make the world better. Boom. 
Well, we agree. We agree. Yeah. That because how everybody's looking like, why doesn't why doesn't Elon Musk <laughs> make the world better? Why doesn't the government make the world better? And it's like that's such a stupid question. Why don't I just make the world better? Because if the world's full of a bunch of people like me and we all do that same thing, guess what? The world will be better. You know, it's funny. It's like what we're, it's like we were talking about here. Uh, that one guy that you did that was like doing the, the sketchy stuff, right? Like, like if mm-hmm. you do things that are problematic that you wouldn't want to happen to you, you're participating and perpetuating that type of activity. So it still exists, right? So it's yeah. bound to happen to you then at some point. Like I think, and this goes, you know, like if you want the environment to be better, if you want things, if you want your community to be better, you got to do something too. You can't yeah. just wish other people would do it, you know? Yeah. No, and it's so, it's like, that's like, we talk about all these things on this channel all the time. It's like, why is this just not taught at school? Like, the simplest concept. I mean, it's the golden rule. Everybody kind of assumes, like, do unto others, but then people just get sidetracked. They're like, do unto others until you go get your MBA and then just fuck over everybody else to get yeah. some more. Money. Yeah, that's what you should Because do. that'll yeah. make you yeah. happy. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, it is. It's crazy, dude. I think that there's so many factors and it's like there's so much like conditioning, social conditioning going on and stuff. But, like, dude, it's nuts. Like, when I, when I teach like, a, you know, applied ethics or like social philosophy, you, 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 I talk to my students about these big issues and they're all like, you know, I really wish these things would change and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, but like, I can't do anything. I'm like, well, you could do something. It might not be like, it might not fix it tomorrow. If that's what you mean. Like, or maybe even fix it like entirely at all, but it would be helping. And like, if everybody thinks like that, though, then nothing will get better. Yeah, I think that's really just it, though, you know, I think. Personal <laughs> responsibility. Yeah, mm. I think that's a huge one. Uh, so the next question, oh, this one could be difficult. What is love? <laughs> that's like a really hard question yeah where's a dictionary <laughs> i don't know like i guess is it is it just chemical processes in the brain and pheromones it's um i think it's, it's a, a lot feeling of things, right? yeah it's it's, feeling, it's something that all of us crave yeah companionship it has many forms it's uh it's good it's nice probably it probably contributes to a good life or happiness you know, might even be necessary for social creatures. Um, uh, what else? It feels good, but also it can yeah. feel bad when you don't have it. It okay. also can be Next really, question. Yeah, whatever. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> We're good. Uh, okay. Oh, what must two people have in common to connect? Aristotle wow. thought they had to have some, like, like, some similarity in character. And whether that meant like either they, they like were similar with respect to certain virtues or similar in virtuous development so that they could like both like um, contribute to each other's like, uh, you know, basically betterment and, and cultivation of a better character and self. But um, I always thought that was interesting. I think, though, in terms of connection, I think, you know, they have to have an interest. They have to have some shared things. Right. And like. Because you have to, you know, they take time. Any time connection or relationship takes time. So yeah, yeah. I look at I look at it in my life, and I I look at it like you have to un, you have to have an understanding of the person. Yeah, and then you also uh, have to be. Uh, I think you have to be like morally, somewhat in the same direction. So yeah, like, yeah, no, I think that's yeah, that's that's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would say those are two things that are that would be important for me to have a connection with somebody, because like, and also, and also, uh, they have to be somewhat uh, invested in me. Yeah, yeah. You have to care so about the like, person for their sake. You know, like, yeah. yeah. It's not going to be a one way thing. So, I which think you also those... have to kind of. You also have to kind of know the person, at least to an extent, and want to know them. You know what I mean, or care about because yeah. it has that care, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, because I've made I've made the mistake of like thinking that I was becoming friends with somebody, and then recognizing later that they didn't give a shit about me, and I that like really surprised me because I was like, why would you, why would you say that you're a friend with somebody if you just don't care about them? Like that that was some yeah. crazy stuff. And yeah, see, so- I always just assumed we were friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know yeah they, i mean but also like you look at you look at ours and it's just it's very easy 
uh yeah we're able to talk about a lot of stuff we care about each other and uh yeah. i think that's it that, that's an important one too though is not like not guilt tripping people and putting pressure like that kind of stuff i don't think is helpful to connection Mm-mm. no yeah no like yeah, that goes back we've to been, understanding we've been friends Karen, forever yeah. and there were some times where we go like months or years without even talking we weren't we even in the same friends. area you know it happens yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's important. Uh, it's an interesting right. one. Yeah. Uh, how much longer you want to go for this? We've got 10 more questions left. Oh, man. Um, I don't know. You want to do a couple more? Or you want to try, okay, try and knock them all good. out? Or we do? Yeah, we can do a couple more. Uh, all right. Because they're not really... What? Uh, okay. I think we knocked so, out a lot. They're really good. Ones. I think we did. Okay. Let's see if there's any like really good ones, and then we'll just go into this. We want to do 17 and... uh. Yeah. 17. Okay. What do we need most in this world? Hmm. See, I think this is an important question because I think we should know (laughs) what things matter to us because then we know what we need. Like we know our values and we know what is important to us. Then we know what we need because those are, those are the same. Mm. I like that. See, I was thinking what the world needs now is love, sweet love. That's true. Too. It's, it it's the only does. thing yeah. that there's just too little of. It is too little of. <laughs> I know. It's horrible, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Man, that's a good song. But I, I, I think there's stuff. love. Uh, is that my honest yeah. answer? What, is, what do we need most? Again, I don't I don't think that we need anything. Like, I, I'm, no. I'm pretty sure we're all, like, alive yeah. and surviving pretty yeah. well. But I was gonna say, you know what's funny? All, a lot of these questions, too, they, they assume that there's something lacking or they assume that there's something missing rather than assuming that this is all of it. You know, like mm. Nietzsche talks about that a lot where he says like, you know, the existence, reality just is like life just is. It's not better or worse. It's not, you know, it not, it's not right or wrong. It just is. And if you accept that, you accept that the reality of the situation, right? But when you always, when you ask questions like this, it's like making these assumptions that kind of make us miss what's actually going on. Mm-hmm. that's that's a great point because none of these questions is like how is this moment perfect yeah <laughs> or is it possible for this moment to be any different from it actually from what it is now that's you know? a good one too <laughs> <laughs> not what's the evaluation because they're all evaluative you know that's the issue it's like yeah. yeah yeah they're like they're like why does this suck and how can i be victimized <laughs> by it <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh fucking victimization God yeah man. well that's it that's yeah, it for right? the questions for this one i think yeah. i think we covered a lot of them we went in depth uh what are your yeah. takeaways from this what did you get from answering these uh questions i actually like questions like this because i think it is good to like think and reflect about these things but like i said i think it's also tough because i think you have to like ask yourself what is the question also assuming how is it what sort of interpretation is it is like sort of underlying that question that's sort of forcing an answer or even assuming that there is an answer to it like maybe it can't be answered maybe it doesn't need to be answered maybe that is actually what it is the case you know but like i think a lot of times we, we kind of cause problems for ourselves because we take these evaluative questions and assume there must be an answer and that it's usually positive right and then it makes us feel like we're lacking now when in fact we might have everything now or everything might just be whatever it's supposed to be because it just is. You know, that's, that's a, the Taoist sort of approach. <laughs> that's a great point uh, about them actually having an answer. I remember when I was learning the Sedona method, one of the problems that they talked about that people have is we're always trying to figure everything out. And so they would always ask, they would say, could you let go of trying to figure it out? Like most of our problems, we're just trying to figure it out. We're just like stuck <laughs> yeah. in this rat race of trying to figure it out. Yeah. And it's like, could you let go of trying to figure it out? And once you let go of that, you're like, ah, okay. Yeah. Could this moment be any yeah. more perfect? All right. It's like, why am I not happy? Why is this not like this? Well, but it's like what it is, you know? So it's like, you know, you just are either, I don't know. It's just funny. Like we, and I think that goes back to what we were saying before. Like we get, we look, we kind of imagine a future state but we forget about the state we're actually in all the time. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I love, I love what they were talking about in meditations where he was like, whether you live a thousand years or you live a day, we're all going to die. And it doesn't yeah. matter if you die a thousand years out or today, because really the only thing you're ever going to lose 
is this moment right here. The rest yeah. of it is just an illusion. Yeah. 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 We're so, only exist right now, right? I mean, yeah. that's just it. Which is yeah. weird when you think about it, you know? Because we have all these memories really- and stuff. Because most of our most of our memories aren't even accurate. Like uh-huh. they've done studies, like, you know, it's like they're so messed, like just you know, we make up whatever we want or you know, interpret them however we want. And I think that's interesting too. Yeah, yeah. We just live in a dream world. That's all. We really do. Try and make yeah. it a nice one and a pleasant one. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Well, Danny, I gotta say it's been an absolute pleasure doing this with you. Oh, it's always it. fun to see you every week. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us for this uh, episode of the Existential Stoic Podcast. We have two episodes a week, so you know, make sure to like, share, subscribe. We do. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. I'm Randy. That's Danny. I'll see you later, Danny. Later, Randy. <laughs>